gifts. Um, we'll be saying a blessing uh, on those quilts as they go out to others. Um, recorded worship is back. We've got it going here. If you are willing to learn how to do it, we even have a tablet now. So you don't even have to download the app to your own phone. <laughs> We're making it really easy. Series. <laughs> um, we're making it really easy if that is something that you're really meant to learn so that we can keep that as a resource for folks. Um, several other announcements that we've got going. The Ecumenical Thanksgiving service is Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. at Elkhart Baptist. Um, so if you're interested in that, that's that timing. David Schumann is stepping down as treasurer, which means we need a new one. If that is something that you think your gifts might be lending themselves towards, please talk to me, talk to David, talk to Ryan Cannon. Um, David is willing to stay on and help train that position so you won't just be thrown into the deep end. Um, but we do need somebody to step in for him. Lots of other things are happening. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, if I can get to all of them, but make sure that you read this, please. Make sure you read it. There are a ton of announcements. Some other ones that I want to highlight especially are, we have poinsettia order forms. Um, the orders for the poinsettias are due on December 4th. So that is two weeks from today. So if you would like to order poinsettia for Christmas, do that. Instructions on how to do it are in this green sheet. The annual meeting is being called for December 11th, following worship. So. Plan to be here December 11th following worship. Yeah, I'm going to get your baskets. <laughs> December 11th following worship. The week before, prior to worship, um, we'll be doing a budget Q&A. So if you have any questions about the budget, we're hoping that we can get a lot of those answered on the 4th to help the meeting on the 11th go a little faster and a little smoother. Um, Babs just lifted up the sign-up sheet for the yeah. morning. 42 people signed up, which is awesome, but we still have room for more. Next week is the last week to sign up for the ladies' month. Yes. And as a reminder, if you have kids under five, we said, right? Kids under five, um, Inga will be here staffing the nursery. So they just need to know that you will need that care, um, and we can take care of that. I feel like I'm missing something. Point at me if you were a person who told me I needed to announce something and I haven't announced it. Yes. Oh, Christmas mother. Yes, thank you. Do you want to explain, Claire? You might be able to explain better than me. Um, just to let everyone know that next Sunday is the last Sunday to bring your Christmas mother gifts. It's the Thanksgiving weekend. If you're not going to be here next Sunday, you can bring them anytime in all the Zoom. And next Sunday is the last Sunday. Great. Thank you so much. Again, ton of stuff in here. Please read it. I just wanted to talk about the budget committee real quick as well, just to highlight that. Uh, it announced the newsletter went out this week. It said it was after worship on December 4th. It's actually going to be before worship on December 4th because Charlie Charlie's saying that. So if you have a family case of fellowship after worship on that day. And I just wanted to kind of just add a little bit for some thought that happened. But there's going to be some complexities with the 2023 budget. We're going to try and get a draft as narrow as we can after council meets this week, just so you all can review it. And if you have questions, come and see any of the area on the board. But I just wanted to call it out. There's going to be a little bit of complexity. I mean, obviously, we'll go over it in full detail at the annual meeting, but also an important good opportunity to really get into the weeds and answer the questions that you all have. It's, well, of course, at 9 o'clock. Yes. Lots more stuff in here, including some stuff for. Um, some fellowship opportunities and other stuff happening. So make sure you read this very carefully. See no other announcements. Oh, one other announcement that I just remembered. <laughs> there's so much happening right now. Um, starting next week as we move into the first Sunday of Advent, as we move into the new church year, um, that's also a seasonal change for us in our liturgy. Um, so we're actually going to start using one of the new settings out of the new hymnal that's come out of the ELCA. It's called All Creation Sings. Um, so don't worry. <laughs> we're going to learn it together. It's going to be great. Um, but that's just a heads up to you all when you show up next week. If you're like, oh my gosh, none of this music is familiar. Um, it's not going to be that scary. We're going to get through it together. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs>
in body or in spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things that we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits, so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out, and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Adam, and to know you is an unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Today's first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, 23rd chapter, beginning on the first verse. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I might myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Let us all speak responsibly. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make its glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. If the nations rage and the kingdoms shake, God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolation is God has brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow, who shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be so and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading comes from the book of Colossians, the first chapter, beginning on the 11th verse. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from its glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things, in heaven and on earth, were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions of rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fulfillness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God is pleased to reconcile to him all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him, if, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'd like to invite any of our youngest members up. Hey there. Yeah. 
So we wear the red one anytime we're celebrating something with the Holy Spirit. So we wear it on Pentecost, when we remember that the Holy Spirit came to the disciples. We wear it when pastors and deacons get ordained, because we pray for the Holy Spirit to come on them. I wore it just about a month ago, a couple weeks ago, for Reformation, when we celebrated the Holy Spirit getting into the church. All right, what about purple? Does anybody remember when we have purple in church? Yes, it's good. We wear purple during the season that we call Lent. That's the season leading up to Easter. And purple is the color that royalty is to wear. So it's a deep color that helps us sort of remember Jesus as our king. We wear white for the Jesus days <laughs> and for All Saints Day. So we wear white for Christmas. We celebrate Jesus' birthday. We wear white for Easter. We celebrate Jesus' resurrection. We wear white today because we're celebrating Christ the King. When we celebrate how God has reigned over our lives. And what about this one, this blue one? When do you think we wear the blue one? Any ideas? There's one season left. Yeah. Close. It's the season leading up to Christmas. It's the season of Advent that starts next week. Yeah. Yes. Right after Thanksgiving is usually the first Sunday of Advent, and that is right. Yeah, and it is in winter. So blue is the color that we wear for Advent, and part of the reason why we wear blue is that Advent is all about waiting for Jesus to get here. And so the blue is the deep blue, the color of the sky right before the sun comes up. Have you ever seen the sun come up? You've stayed up late enough to see the sun come up? Or maybe you've got up really early. Well, if you ever have, you know that the sky is a really deep blue right before that happens. And so we wear that blue on Advent to help us think about it. So I just wanted to celebrate that it's going to be a new church year. We're going to start with Advent next week. So next week, make sure you look and make sure that everything's changed to blue. Okay? <laughs> me too. Sometimes I forget to put the right stone on. So you got to keep me going. All right, let's say a prayer together, okay? Can you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for being with us throughout the year. Help us mark special days when we can learn more about you. Amen. All right, you guys can go on back. If you want to after church, if you want to try on a stool, you can come up after church and try one on. explaining to our youngest members that today is the last day of the church year. Next week we begin that cycle that will take us through Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, and Easter. But the history of this particular Sunday I think is really interesting. For a long time this Sunday was referred to as Judgment Sunday, calling to mind the second coming of Christ and the end of time. It wasn't until 1925 that Pope Pius XI decided that the name should be changed and other church bodies followed suit. Did you know that this festival has only been celebrated since 1925? That's not that long in the grand scheme of the church's history. Now think back to your history classes or whatever podcast you like listening to and try to remember what was happening in the world in 1925. What was going on? especially in Europe. In 1925, Europe is almost exactly between the end of World War I and the beginning of World War II, and nationalism was on the move in Europe. Benito Mussolini was amassing power in Italy. Two years earlier, Hitler attempted a coup, 
And even still, the Nazi party was gaining popularity and influence in Germany. What was the message that seemed to be so appealing to the beaten, war-weary people of Europe? It was a message that was rooted in a nationalist identity, one that blamed others, blamed outsiders, blamed people who were different for the ills facing the so-called normal people. And it was a message that declared that there was salvation and a way forward, but it could only be found in one place or in one person. Mussolini, Hitler. It was a message that focused on the power of humans and downplayed or downright ignored the role of God in human history. And so as Pope Pius was watching this unfold, he decided to make a statement. In one of his encyclicals, he introduced Christ the King Sunday as a response. There's a lot in this particular encyclical, but it boiled down to proclaim that if we say that Christ is king, as our scriptures do, then Christ should be king over our whole being. That Christ should reign over our bodies, our minds, and our hearts, and our faith should be in God, and certainly not in a national identity or in any mortal power. This is a message that we continually need to hear. Because we are continually tempted to put our faith in ourselves and in other human authority. We might come to church on a Sunday and nod our heads and say, yes, of course Christ is king. But it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to feel it. It's another thing to live like it's actually true. It's another thing to even just know why it matters. Christ being king, Christ reigning over us matters because of the kind of ruler that Christ is. Because in just about every way, Jesus embodied everything that kings and rulers are not. Jesus was poor. He grew up as a member of the lower class. He lived in occupied territory under the thumb of an oppressive regime. He traveled from place to place and, in his own words, had no place to lay his head. He relied on other people for food and shelter and, by all indications, had no worldly possessions to his name. Jesus was loving and generous to people who were considered outcasts. He regularly ate with people who others would avoid. He cared more about the people forgotten by society than the people who were well off and well settled. He sought out the powerless and didn't care whether or not he had the favor of the powerful. Jesus was peaceful. He called for his disciples to pray for those who persecuted him. He, he told them to offer up the other cheek if they were hit. When Jesus, when Peter drew his sword at the end of Jesus's life, Jesus told Peter, all who take the sword will perish by the sword. He called for justice and righteousness and peace among people. Even still, Jesus was passionate. He was not some milk toast Messiah who never raised his voice and never took people to task. He wasn't afraid to call out religious leaders for their unfair practices. He didn't back down when faced with Pilate's interrogation. He even got angry, flipping over the temple, the tables in the temple, and making a whip out of cords. He was all of these things. And him being all of these things is what angered people. That's why we get to the gospel reading that we have for this morning, the passion story. Jesus did not fit the mold of what a king should be, and so we killed him. He wasn't like the kings of the ancient Israelites because he wasn't a military leader. He wasn't prepared to remove the Romans by force. And he wasn't a king any of the Romans would recognize because he wasn't amassing power by suppressing others. Even as Jesus is being crucified, most people do not understand who and what he is. The inscription over him it says, the king of the Jews as a mockery, not a sincere claim. 
They are laughing at their own clever joke. Because how in the world could a king be killed in such a way? It is only one of the criminals next to Jesus who recognizes his authority. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let's talk about crucifixion for a second. It was not an unusual mode of execution for the Roman Empire. It's not just something that these three people experienced, Jesus and the two criminals. It was regularly used. And it was not just about killing someone, not just about taking their life. It was about humiliating them and torturing them. People suffocated once they got to the point where their arms could no longer hold themselves up. The cross as a mode of death was a particular favorite for individuals who were considered lower class, but who had tried to rebel against the empire. It was used most often in slave revolts. The thought was that these people had tried to rise above their station. They had tried to lift themselves above people who were better than them. So if that's what they wanted, the Romans would do it for them. They want to be lifted up? Sure, we'll lift them up. They were often left on display for days or weeks as a public sign of what would happen if you dared defy Rome. In fact, the cross was so horrifying a symbol that it took Christians until over a hundred years after Jesus' death for it to be used as a widespread symbol for a Jesus follower. Like they'd have a heart attack coming in here and seeing a cross on display as a symbol of our faith. We've sanitized it now, but it would be like worshiping with an electric chair or a guillotine in front of us. But our king was crucified because our king was unexpected. Our Messiah, our Savior, our Sovereign is by all accounts a criminal executed by the state, and that doesn't sound terribly kingly to most people. But thanks be to God that we didn't need God to come into our world as the king the world expected. We needed God to come into our world as the king that we needed. We need a ruler who leads with abundant love instead of caring only for those deemed worthy. We need a ruler who relentlessly pursues peace and justice instead of vengeance. We need a ruler who is generous instead of one who either hoards or squanders resources. And this is what we have. Not in any mortal power or in control anywhere in our world, but in our incredible God, whose sovereignty is not limited by national boundaries, ethnic identities, or cultural differences. And so when we look around and wonder where our trust, where our allegiance belongs, it is in the one who claimed and named us in baptism. It is the one who feeds us with his very body and blood at this table. It is in the one who forgives us and loves us unconditionally. This is our King. This is our God. Amen. <laughs> you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing our hymn of the day.
have you stay standing as you're able to prevent us going up and down. Um, can we talk, would you like to say a couple words about Kaisa Vine? I just want to thank everyone who's participated in any way with our ministry of Kaisa Vine. It's, um, it's such a passion of mine as far as creating something warm, colorful and loving to give to someone in need. So if you have helped us in any way, we appreciate it. Please continue to support our ministry and we thank you as we just um, enjoy and dedicate these quilts. Uh, I'm going to invite you um, to put a hand on a quilt near you if you don't already have one. Let us pray. God, our comforter, we praise you for the gifts of creation that made these quilts, for the repurposed fabric that created them new, for the batting donated to each quilt center, for the sheets that comprise their backing, for the loving hands that ironed, cut, sewed, layered, pinned, and tied together each quilt so that each creation could be colorful and warm. We thank you for the laughter and love shared as people worked on these quilts, for the hands that cold them into this new creation. Bless these quilts, your work completed by our hands as they go to homeless shelters, crisis centers, social service agencies, refugee camps, and disaster zones. May you meet the weary souls to receive these quilts with strength. May, the warm sh may they warm shivering bodies. May they soften the resting places of the downtrodden. May they keep the dampness of rain away and brighten dreary and empty places. All thanks and praise belong to you, Lord Christ. Now cover the world with your rain as we send these quilts to cover and shelter in your name. Amen. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, I pray for our shared world. We pray for your church, emboldened denominations and faith-based organizations in creative and collaborative ministries, and increase our work for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, we see our prayer. We pray for the earth. Protect waterways from pollution and animal habitats from destruction. Guide us in careful stewardship of waters, plant life, and animals. Lord, in your mercy, save our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, instill in every leader's heart the desire for justice and peace. Support the work of international collaborations that seek the goals of health and joy for all people. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for all who are under, under kind or oppressed. Amplify the voices of the unheard and break open stubborn systems of injustice. Bring about your righteousness and fill us all with your redeeming light. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for all suffering in mind, body, and spirit, especially for the Dugin family, Brian, Rose, Tony, Blackwell family, Cameron, Vinny and his family, Anya, Riva, Courtney, the Abrams family, the Nails family, Blaine, Ella, Jan, Pat, Joe, and Marsh. And for all those whom we keep on our minds and in our hearts. Ron and Joni, Ellison. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for this assembly. Guide our pastor and council members in discernment. Nurture new leaders with fresh ideas. Give this congregation a spirit of discipleship and service. Lord, in your mercy, we receive our prayer. We give thanks for all who have died in the faith, especially Meryl, Peter, Lynn, Maria, Donna, Chris, and Carol. 
console us, to mourn and comfort us with the beautiful promise of life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also Share that peace with one another. <laughs> Peace be with you. Gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, 
and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you, gathered here with all the saints. You may be seated.
name, the right, the body, or in spirit. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope. Bless you now and forever. <coughs> Thanks be to God.